So for the next four Sundays, uh, including this one, uh, I thought I will uh, start a series. I will be preaching on a series entitled Back to the Basics. The basics, you know, being prayer, praying, mm -hmm. reading the word of God, mm -hmm. uh, fellowshipping, the church, and then uh, witnessing, really. So we are going to spend some time on those topics. And today it's going to be, of course, about prayer. And my sermon today is entitled, Could You Not Pray? It's a question. So if you have your Bible with me, uh, with you, please turn with me to Mark chapter 14, verses 32 to 38. Mark 14, chapter, uh, Mark 14, uh, verses 32 to 38. And I will be reading from the <clears throat> uh, NIV version, New International Version. Mark 14, 32 to 38. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little further, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. This is the word of the Lord. So here we see that Jesus said, keep watch, keep watch, watch and pray three times repeated three times in this short passage of scripture. The Bible tells us that the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. There are actually examples in the Bible of people who prayed powerful prayers, and we're gonna look at some of them. First, Elijah. Elijah was a man who was able to close the sky and open it with his prayers. James 5, 17 to 18, we read, Elijah was a human being even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed and the heavens gave rain and the earth produced its crops. Amazing. He was able to open the sky and close the sky with his prayers. Elisha, his spiritual son, was another man that prayed powerful prayers. He actually was able to close and open people's eyes in, in, you know, uh, when it comes to him. 2 Kings 6, 18 to 20, we read, As the enemy came down toward him, Elisha prayed to the Lord, Strike this army with blindness. So he struck, struck them with blindness, as Elisha had asked. Elisha told them, this is not the road, and this is not the city. Follow me, and I will lead you to the man you are looking for. And he led them to Samaria. After they entered the city, Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of this man so that they can see. Then the Lord opened their eyes, and they looked and there they were inside Samaria. Just fascinating story. It's the story of uh, the king of Aram, the Arameans, and the king of Israel. Uh, they were at war, and every time the king of Aram set up an ambush, Elisha would send word to the king of Israel and tell him, don't go to this road, don't go to this city, don't go to this area, because there's an ambush for you. So at each time, the king would escape and his army would escape. So at the end of the day, the king of Aram was just enraged. And he said, tell me, guys, who's the traitor in our, in our midst? Who's telling him all our military strategies? 
And then his officers told him, no, 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 no. There's no traitor in our midst. It's Elisha. There's a word of, uh, there's a man of God called Elisha. And he is able to even hear what you say in your in your bedroom <laughs> so it, it's not us you know it's not us so the king of aram said okay go get him go get that guy so he sent his army his officers to get elisha and this is how we find elisha saying you know lord send blindness to them close their eyes so really what happened is they could not recognize him you know if elisha was uh, bald uh, then he, they saw him as someone that is hairy well, however that happened so they could not recognize him and he led them straight in the midst of the Israeli army. Very interesting, fascinating story. In your own time, I would encourage you to go and read it. Second Kings 6, chapter 6. And finally, the third uh, person that I want us to consider is Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a king of uh, Judah, and he prayed. And when he prayed, he was able to change his debt of death. How would you like that? Would you like to change your date of death? <laughs> I would, <laughs> depending <laughs> on when, whether I want to live longer or not. <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know, I'm not going to read it. It's found in Isaiah 38, 1 to 5. But long story short, God had told them, you know, get your house in order. You're going to die. And Hezekiah, King Hezekiah would pray. And as a result, God would <laughs> add 15 years to his life. That's the story. So, of course, you know, I, I gave examples in the Old Testament, but there are examples of powerful and effective prayers in the New Testament as well. Uh, the disciples, you know, when Peter was in prison to be executed, er, prayed earnestly, it says in the book of Acts, and God would send an angel and save Peter miraculously from prison. So that is another example of a powerful and effective prayers so pa effective and powerful prayers to pray powerful and effective prayers first and foremost i believe that it starts with our attitude towards prayer our attitude towards prayer plays a huge role proverbs 15 8 reads the lord detests the sacrifice of the wicked but the prayer of the upright pleases him the prayer of the upright pleases him so please say with me my prayer pleases God my prayer is favored by God my prayer is acceptable to God amen yes our prayer pleases him because it says the prayer of the upright pleases God. It starts, we have to believe that our prayer pleases him. He wants and he, he, he is pleased when he hears our prayer. But of course, you know, uh, when we pray with the right attitude, we also need to live right. It's not only, you know, the right attitude towards prayer, but we also have to live right. One version of the Bible translation actually says, God favors the prayers of those who do right. The, God favors the prayers of those who do right. Doing right, uh, doing right, of course, starts with living right, having the right relationship with the Lord, right? A righteous person is one who stands on the righteousness of Christ, not on our own righteousness. If we stand on our own merits, on our own goodness, on our own good works, that's not the right relationship with God, right? So when we stand on the righteousness that Christ gives us, you know, Christ is our righteousness, Christ is our holiness, Christ is our redemption. When we have the right relationship with God through Christ, then we are already living right. And that will, of course, lead us to do the right thing right so not our own righteousness but the righteousness of god who actually allows us to do right so the right attitude towards prayer but also living right but living right based on the right relationship with god i actually love you know how the amplified version explains this he made christ who knew no sin to judicially 
be seen on our behalf so that in him we would become the righteousness of God. That is, we would be made acceptable to him and placed in a right relationship with him by his gracious, loving kindness. So again, based on the righteousness of God that is found in Christ because he, be, he took our sin and he became sin on our behalf. So I, I think this is clear, you know, precious people, we can pray until we are blue in the face if we have not the right relationship with God and if we are not following and obeying his instructions that he gives us in the Bible, our prayers are not going to be powerful and effective, right? Everybody is with me here? Mm. I hope we all agree on that. That is the basic minimum. And yes, you know, God, it says actually, you know, it rains on the righteous and the unrighteous, right? God in his infinite mercy, in his infinite compassion, because he's infinitely merciful, he's infinitely compassionate, he answers the prayers of those who do not even know him, right? And that's why a lot of people from various religious groups, they pray and they get their prayers answered. It's because it rains on the righteous and on the unrighteous. It's not only the prayers of Christians that are answered. This is though the, 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 the compassion of God. This is the mercy of God. This is uh, who he is. But that is not the norm. As Christians or as people who have a relationship with God, that is not what makes our prayer powerful and effective if we do not live right. Now, <clears throat> so we're building on this. So our attitude toward prayer counts. Living right and having the right relationship with God plays a part. Now, the, the, the third uh, uh, portion that I have on that, not long ago, actually, let me uh, guide you a little bit how I got there. Not long ago, as I was waking up from uh, my sleep, I heard your name is a strong tower. And I heard it in my mother tongue, in Amharic. And uh, it said, you know, similes and nagumbuno. It probably sounds like uh, tongues, speaking tongues to you guys. Similes and nagumbuno. Your name, the translation is, your name is a strong tower. Proverbs 18.10 tells us that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they find refuge, Right? And that is why we pray in the name of Jesus. So the third aspect of powerful and prayerful prayers is that we pray in the name of Jesus. You know, Jesus actually told us, you know, we may ask anything in his name and he will do it. Right. He told us that, you know, and we read from the Bible at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Demons submit to us in Jesus' name, right? That's what the Bible tells us. So I believe uh, the name of Jesus is what we need to do to, you know, to get to powerful and pre effective prayers. The name of Jesus is indeed a strong tower. The problem, though, is that there are people who use the name of Jesus as a formula? What do I mean by that? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Because they have added in the name of Jesus at the end of the prayer. They think, you know, they need to get what they prayed for. The name, it's not a formula. It's, it's, it's not, you know, that's not what he means when he says, you know, pray in my name and I will do it uh, to you. There's some, someone actually that I respect very much and who flows actually in science, wonders and miracles that said something that really captured me as I was looking, as I was preparing my note for this sermon. And I'm going to quote him. I believe it's a good and valuable exhortation for all of us. He said, power to heal, and I'm quoting him, power to heal, deliver and save does not come by saying words. Without the help of Holy Spirit, we're saying words. Without the backing of Holy Spirit, we are saying words. Power to heal, deliver, and bless come not by saying words, but by praying prayer. 
Praying prayer is not saying words. Saying words is not praying prayer. Now, he's going to explain it a little bit, a little, a little bit later. He, this is what he said. My reward for relationship with Jesus is power. That's our reward. No power, no relationship. No relationship, no power. To know God is to know his power, which means, you know, knowing facts about Jesus does not change our relationship with him. Therefore, does not affect the power. Being a preacher and historical about Jesus that not, does not change our relationship with him. So basically what he's doing, and I'm ending the quote, what he's equating here is he's equating power or effectiveness in prayer with relationship with God. Basically, what he's saying is it's not because you've said in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that you are going to have an answer to your prayer. It's not a form formula. It's not a, a magic word. It's your relationship. How, my, how, how much do you know him? How much time you spend reading his word? How much time you, know, you spend having quality time with him that counts to be backed by the Holy Spirit as you pray? This is what he's saying. So my question to all of us, this is to all of us, including myself, is how is our relationship with God, you know, with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? How is our relationship with him if we cannot spend even one hour with him? One hour in prayer, that is. In the scripture passage that we just read at the beginning, and that is what my title was, Could You Not Pray? for one hour, right? In the scripture passage that we read, Jesus asks his disciples, his friends, that exact question, right? Could you not, not pray for one hour? And I want that to really sink into our soul. Could you not pray for one hour? Of course, which brings me to the closing point of this, and then we will go into ministry time. So precious people, my friends, beloved of God, we need to cultivate our prayer life. We need to cultivate it if we want to pray powerful and effective prayers that open and close the sky, that open and close people's eyes, that, you know, extend lives, you know, that cast out demons, right? We need to have a vibrant relationship with the Lord and we need to pray. Yes, we can start, of course, by praying only for five minutes a day, but, you know, 10 minutes into our relationship with the Lord, we shouldn't still be praying five minutes a day. Right? Is that fair? I think that sounds fair. I mean, even an earthly relationship would not work that way. If I only spend honey with you five minutes a day, I don't think we'll go very far together. <laughs> if you spent only five minutes a day with me, I don't think it will go very far, right? Mm -hmm. So what we cannot accept in our earthly affairs, we cannot accept of God. So we should not be surprised and disappointed when our prayers do not work, when we don't know God, even though we think we know God, <clears throat> right? So our precious Savior, you know, his name is Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? Emmanuel means God with us, God with me. God with dad, God with Oriel, right? God with us. The best gift that God gave us is not a home, is not children, is not a promotion, is not a job, is not health, even though he does give us all of that, right? God is good. He gives us good stuff. You know, he's given me you, honey. He's given us the children. Oriel, he's given you your children, right? He's given you, you know, good stuff. But that is not the best. Of what he has given us the best that he has given us is himself it's emmanuel god with us so we need to cultivate that relationship with him we need to spend time with with him and that is why i think you know as we start this ministry i want to start with going back to the basics prayer going back to the basics reading the word of god basics fellowship basics fe witnessing right so I don't think, you know, an hour a day is too much to ask, you know, if we really want 
you know, we cannot give him again leftover time. You know, expect him to stand with us. He's not a genie in a bottle, in a sense. <laughs> God is not safe after me. God is not a genie in a bottle. <laughs> yes. Because, you know, the Bible promises us if God is for us, who can be against us? You know, nothing can withstand us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. The Bible is filled with promises of God. You know, he promises, you know, to bless those who bless us, curse those who curse us. He promises that when we pass through the waters, it will not sweep us over. When we pass through the fire, it will not scorch us. It will not burn us. Those are real promises that he has given us because Emmanuel is with us. But we have to spend time with him. Yes, we have to believe in prayer, first of all. It all starts with attitude. Because it pleases him. It's a sweet-smelling aroma unto him. We have to have a, the right relationship with him based on the righteousness of Christ. And we have to spend time with him, at least an hour, minimum an hour, I, I would say. Now, this is not, you know, to put religiosity upon us or, you know, like, you have to pray an hour every day, otherwise you're going to hell. That is, <laughs> please don't misunderstand me. That is not what I mean. That is not what I mean. What I mean is for our prayers to be effective and powerful we need to be consistent and diligent in our prayer lives that's what i mean and we have to be intentional with our prayer life you know we have to cultivate it when i say we have to cultivate it that's what i mean uh, i mean daniel daniel prayed three times a day consistently and he would not change that for anything even under the threat of death remember the story where you know there was, a, uh, there was a law that said, you know, if you pray to anyone other than the king of Babylon, you'll be thrown to the lions. That wouldn't even change him, right? So we have to be intentional. We have to be consistent. We have to be diligent with our prayer life. So, beloved, that's why I, what I encourage you to do, you know, set time apart for God. You know, for me personally, what I did is I, when I started taking this to heart that I needed to spend time being intimate, you know, in my prayer time, I set it at six first because I was working at that time. I had to be at work around eight o'clock. So I thought six o'clock, you know, if six o'clock I'm ready and I'm spending time with God. That would be great. So I started by setting it at six in the morning. And because, you know, most people, most people were asleep in the house at that time. And, you know, there was less chance of distractions, less chance of interruptions. So, that's why people pray in the early morning, because there's less distractions, less, there's less interruptions. As I did that, though, surprisingly, as I went through the weeks, I started getting up at five. And then I started getting up at four. And then I started getting up at three. And then I started getting up at two. It's just your spirit, man, awakens earlier and earlier the more you spend time with God. It's not enough. That six hour that waking up at six hours was not enough anymore so it would i would wake up at five i would wake up at three i would wake up at two and it was not like you know more than, jesus prayed all night long right all night long it's because he had that special special relationship with the lord he was not doing it out of religiosity i think it just came naturally the more time you spend praying the more the time will not be enough with the lord right and our spirit man becomes aware and reminds us we don't even need to set up our clock. I think our clock went uh, one hour. We gained one hour because of daylight saving time, I think. Mm -hmm. But it's like we really, it, it becomes uh, innate. It becomes natural to us. We don't have to set up the clock. So precious ones, let me again encourage you. Let your attitude towards prayer be my prayer is pleasant to god he wants to hear it it's favored by god it is acceptable by god have the right relationship with god of course most of us i think in this room we are saved we are born again children of god we have the right relationship based on the righteousness of christ let us follow his instructions and obey him and live right right and if we make mistakes there's no problem we can always repent confess right and go back to a right relationship with, with him. So let us live right. Let us do right. But let us also spend time with him. Could you not pray for one hour? Could you not pray for one hour? 
what is it that is keeping you from praying for one hour? Busyness? Is it the wrong attitude towards prayer? What is it that is keeping you away? Is it unanswered prayers? Is it just, you know, your, your favorite Netflix show, the series of it, you know, one episode after another, after another, after another. You know, when it comes to, you know, movies and entertainment, we can watch for hours nonstop. But when it comes to prayer, we can't even pray for one hour. So what is it? Let's confess it to the Lord. He can help us. He can help us. It's all by grace. So let the grace of God let the anointing of God, of God, let the favor of God abound for us as we pray and consistently look uh, for his face. And then our prayers will become powerful and effective. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah.